This is the aftermath of an ambush on a highway in Pakistan's Musa Khail district. At least 23 people were shot dead here after the attackers checked their identity cards then opened fire. The gunmen first targeted the trucks. They burned them and after that they stopped the buses. Any passenger who came from Punjab was forced to get off before they shot them dead. The gunmen also burned 10 trucks and vehicles before fleeing. It took several hours for the security forces and medical teams to reach to area. Both the dead and wounded have been taken to the nearest hospital. A medical emergency was declared when we heard about the incident. All of us, doctors, paramedics and other staff have been present here in the hospital since last night and in the morning after prayers. The casualties were brought to our hospital. This is not the first attack of its kind. Earlier in April, another nine people were killed in a similar attack in Noshki district of Balochistan. Pakistani security sources say there have been a number of attacks across Balochistan and they claim to have killed at least 12 of the attackers without giving exact details of all the locations. A separatist group called the Baluch Liberation Army has claimed responsibility for the attack. Pakistan's interior minister called it barbaric and promised to bring those responsible to justice. Kamal Haider Al Jazeera, Islamabad. Well, this is the latest in a series of attacks in Balochistan targeting migrant workers, primarily from Punjab province. In April this year, nine passengers were pulled off a bus near Noshki and shot dead after gunmen checked their ID cards. Last October, unidentified gunmen killed six labourers in Turbat. The police confirmed that these killings were targeted, with all the victims being from southern Punjab. Back in 2015, gunmen attacked a labourer's camp near Turbat, killing 20 construction workers and injuring three others. The victims were from Sindh and Punjab. Anza Saqib is a security and defence analyst. She's joining us now from Islamabad. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. The Balochistan Liberation Army describes itself as a, separ uh, a separatist force, but it, it is clearly targeting migrant workers from outside the country. Talk to us about what the motivation is behind that. So separatist uh, groups in Balochistan have occasionally targeted such migrant laborers party, uh, partly because it's a symbolic act against what they view as the exploitation and uh, marginalization of land and resources by so-called outsiders, according to them. Uh, these attacks uh, aim to draw attention to their cause and exert undue pressure on the government and industries operating operating in the region. Now, it's interesting that a lot of these attacks have grown post uh, the constitutional amendment, uh, the 18th amendment, uh, whereby Balochistan still faces uh, multifaceted challenges rooted in ethnic tensions and resource disputes. Uh, we must also keep in mind that the ethnic tensions uh, of Balochistan are deeply entwined with the, the political grievances that such groups have uh, while they feel marginalized and underrepresented. Um, it, it harbors a significant discontent against both the central government and other ethnic groups. It is unfortunate uh, and the tension has only manifested in these kind of violent insurgencies and demands for greater autonomy and independence. However, uh, the Pakistani government, the law enforcement agencies uh, now more than ever need to revisit not only the um, negotiation and table talks with uh, some of the senior politicians, uh, think tanks and civil society members uh, to come up with a multifaceted solution to these challenges because just violence alone is not going to be able to recover and uh, uh, de-escalate the violence Mm. Now, uh, we also have to keep in mind that a lot of this is happening due to Balochistan's wealth in minerals and natural gas. Uh, local communities have often been arguing that they receive minimal economic gains or infrastructural development. And that leads to a widespread dissatisfaction and fueling separatist sentiments furthermore. Mm. Um, addressing these issues requires a nuanced approach involving equitable resource distribution, enhanced political representation, and a commitment to addressing the socio-economic needs of Balochistan. Pakistan's population. Mm. Uh, we also need to keep in mind that this has happened right, uh, the coincidence of these attacks have coincided with the death anniversary of uh, Nawab Akbar Bukti on the 26th of August. So uh, it is a clear-cut message that they are trying to send and now it's uh, 
uh, you know, more than ever, uh, more like a blackmailing tactic uh, by violent, uh, through violent means. Mm. What can you tell us about the structure of the Balochistan Liberation Army and the way that it's uh, organized and how many people are involved? So there are a lot of uh, groups that are involved with the Balochistan Liberation Army. And now we know that uh, a lot of these were uh, start, we started off as uh, student leaders, uh, you know, some of their uh, senior leadership at the moment. And we must understand that uh, there are a lot of foreign forces that are at play uh, time and time again, you know, just to destabilize a lot of the uh, economic and progress missions in Pakistan, because uh, we've seen that uh, a lot of these groups have uh, declared uh, a lot of this violence against uh, the efforts that are positive for Pakistan, such as in the case of CPEC. So uh, this is definitely something that needs to uh, be understood. So it's one thing to uh, let peaceful uh, protests happen um, in the name of missing persons. Yes, for that, we just need to understand that the law and order situation, the writ of the state, uh, needs to uh, bring justice to uh, uh, those that have been harmed, uh, the innocents that have been harmed. Mm. I want to ask you about the, the role of CPEC in this, because that's the China-Pakistan economic corridor, which of course in, involves Chinese investment within Pakistan, and right. obviously one would imagine to some degree within uh, Balochistan uh, province I I itself. These, if I understand it correctly, these attacks aren't just limited to uh, workers predominantly from Punjab, but we have also seen uh, workers from China as well being affected. Absolutely. Like I said, time and time again, uh, you know, that there is this grievance, this sentiment uh, that uh, the China-Pakistan economic corridor is going to sabotage the rights of the people there uh, in terms of the youth having job opportunities and uh, a, a share in the chunk of mineral resources. So um, it's very interesting to note that uh, one of the clauses of the 18th Amendment, which, uh, uh, you know, promised 50 percent uh, distribution of uh, the mineral resource uh, allocation to the province is not being implemented in its full uh, spirit in Pakistan, especially in the Balochistan area. And that does uh, lead to a lot of grievances, but uh, it is being used in an unjustified manner to sort of destabilize the efforts of CPEC. Now, uh, the China-Pakistan economic corridor is of utmost strategic importance to Pakistan's economy at the moment. And uh, the law enforcement agencies, the government uh, need to control such insurgency in order to uh, maintain uh, the uh, efficacy of mm. the CPEC. Anza Saqib is a security and defense analyst, and we appreciate you being with us from Islamabad. Thank you very much indeed. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.